All right, so today is gonna be the second message in our series, Light of the World. It's my Christmas series this year. And last year, or last week, I preached a message titled Sitting in Darkness. I would highly encourage you to go back and listen to that message. The premise of that message is that we should never take a seat in darkness, but move through it when it comes because darkness is gonna come. Jesus said that in this world, you'll have trouble, but take heart because he's overcome the world, darkness, trouble, hardship, life, whatever it is that comes against you, Jesus overcame it. But the key is for you to not take a seat in it, to not stop when the darkness comes, but to get up and move out of it every single time. It's when you take a seat there that you find yourself out of your God-ordained position. It's when you find yourself out of your destiny. It's when you find yourself out of God's original intent for your life, which God has one for, every, for all of us. It's when you find yourself out of your position of authority. It's when the darkness en- envelops you and completely closes in and caves in on your mind, your heart, your life, and where you feel like, I can't see, I have nowhere to go, I feel totally lost, I have no vision, I have no understanding, I'm bewildered, then I feel hopeless. Now, I've been in that spot many, many, many a time, but every single time, God has pulled me out, every single time. He's never given up on me and he'll never give up on you. The key for you to understand is that you're never stuck, ever. We just choose to remain stuck. But you're not stuck because darkness is a lie. Darkness is a lie. You have to trade back the seat that you exchanged in the first place. God always had an original tent. Now, Adam, when he sinned, put everybody in a seat, didn't he? Because of one man's sin, all the world was poisoned and infected with a carnal nature and with the desire to rule by their own intellect. It put them in the seat of trying to be good and in the seat of bringing justice, but it always fails miserably. But God never intended that. God never had that intention for you. So what we did when we stopped in darkness, whatever the darkness is, whatever the darkness was that came, when you made the choice to sit in that darkness, you exchanged a seat that God never meant for you to have. But see, God trades you back every time. I wanna trade back. I'm sorry, Lord. It's not where I wanna be or not what I wanna do and it's not who I am and I know that's what you say so I'm trading my seat. Can I, can I have an exchange back? He says, yeah. In fact, the truth is, is that God, when you come into Christ, he seats you at his right hand. You, he never actually took you out of that spot. The darkness just lied to you and gave you a new name, child of darkness. But that's not your actual title. That's not who God calls you. He calls you a child of the light children of light. So you have to trade back your seat. You have to go back into your rightful place by getting up and getting out. Get up and get out. Man, I'm passionate about this because I've gotten up and gotten out every time and God took me out every single time. time. But you can't do it without Jesus. You can't behavior modify your way out. Can't try to be a better person to get out. Listen, if Jesus himself said, why are you calling me good? What makes you think you're good? Because you ain't good. Goodness only comes from God. God doesn't want you to be good. He wants you to be spiritual. And the only way that you can do good is to be spiritual. Does God want you to do good? Yes, If Jesus himself said, why are you calling me good? Only the Father in heaven's good. Then he understood that we can't do one thing without the Lord in our life. And Jesus transforming us and making us to be what he's called us to be. But you gotta get up and get out of that darkness. In your darkest time, God always pulls you out and he does this unique thing that we're gonna talk about today is he separates the darkness from the light that you were originally created and designed to be. So there's a division. There's a separation that happens. Let's take a look at it. In Genesis chapter one, verse one, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and it was void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. 
and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided, I want you to see this, he divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. The entire Bible starts with darkness. It starts with darkness. I'm gonna show you this repeated pattern. God always comes to the darkness to create, to reveal, to heal, and to bring new life out of it. Always. So in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form and it was void. What does without form mean? Without form means empty, confused, a wasteland, desolate, a wilderness, isolated, worthless, and complete chaos. Without form. That's how we are or were before Jesus. We were without form. We felt worthless. We felt isolated. We were in a wilderness or a wasteland. We were empty and we were confused. And then when I think about void, the earth being void, I think about Psalm 127 verse one. Unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. Vanity and void are synonymous. It literally means it's pointless. It has no purpose. It has no direction. It has no aim. It's a waste of time. It's not valid. It's illegal, useless, ineffective. And it's unfilled, completely empty space or a vacuum. The best way that I can describe a vacuum is how it was for me before I gave my life to the Lord. So for me, I was playing in a reggae band, following the Grateful Dead around the country, getting high, selling drugs, eating mushrooms, tripping acid, sleeping around, and living for myself. I was raised in a, in a godless world without God-fearing parents. Separated parents, small town, Missouri. I got high and drunk at 14, lost my virginity at 14. It was the way of the world. I didn't know any other way. All my friends were doing it, so I did it. Puked my guts out at 14, got high behind the pizza place in small town, Missouri. It was a terrible situation. And then that just led into things only getting worse. Now, the worst I had been through after that really was getting busted for pot a few times and facing a misdemeanor offense. No big deal for me. That was a normal situation. Plus, I believed it needed to be legal back then anyway, so I didn't really care. I was going to fight it tooth and nail. But things never got better. And eventually, in 1992, I would go through the eye of Hurricane Andrew in Florida City right next to Homestead. Category 5 hurricane hits my house. I'm buried alive in the closet with water up to my chin. I have a black lab dog shivering because the cabinets are, are banging, the roof's ripping off, the house is falling apart, there's a mattress over our head, the dog poops in the water, my mom is terrified, she poops in the water. It was bad. It was a terrible situation. And I could see out through the rafters the black swirling clouds at 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. And I so desperately wanted to cry out to someone or something for help, but I didn't know God. But in that moment, in my darkest hour, something inside of me longed and cried out for desperate help. I desperately, desperately needed help. When I would go out partying all night long and sleeping around and doing the stuff that I do at five, sometimes till three, four in the morning, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, I'd be laying in bed, staring at the wall, empty. I had everything I thought I wanted in the world. I thought I was doing good. I had a lot of friends. I was playing in the bands. I had people that had money and drugs, and I thought it was great. But the problem was there was a vacuum. Now, I don't know what your vacuum is. Yours just doesn't have to be my story, but everybody faces the vacuum. Everybody faces the void or faced it at some time or another. And it was that void in that vacuum and in that place that God commanded me to come out of darkness. God commanded the light and divided the darkness out and then pulled me up and out. He said, you are coming out. And he used circumstances and situations in life to do it. For me, it was more trouble, more hardship, more difficulty, combusting, because eventually you'll combust. You don't break God's laws, they break you. But God keeps pulling you out, pulling you out. Mercy, 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 mercy. And then giving you grace, which is his influential power on your mind, 
Your soul, your emotions, he's influencing you in that place to not run away and not pull away, but to come back every single time. You're saved by grace, and then through faith, when I say, man, God, I need you. Right. It was after that hur- a hurricane wiped out my house when the drugs couldn't do it and the crystals couldn't do it and the things of this world couldn't do it that I cried the most powerful prayer with authenticity and sincerity, God help. And God commanded, he saw, he heard, and he pulled me up out and transformed my life. But here's the thing, he didn't just do it then, he does it every time. Every single time. So my life was at the time useless, ineffective, and a vacuum. And it was void. It was empty and confused. It was without form. I was, a, I was a wasteland and a desolate place. But what was happening at that time? It's the same thing that was happening in Genesis 1. It says that the spirit of the Lord hovered. Now, the understanding of hovered is a fluttering effect. It's a fluttering effect with expectation. An expectation that life would come out of the darkness. So the earth was without form and void. The spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the deep. And I want you to see about the face of the deep. You know what the face of the deep is to me? It's this deep place that no one knows about. It's a place that a lot of times we stuff and hide things. It's a place where shame, lies, fear, worry. It's the place where you feel misunderstood. It's the place where you feel alone. I'm all alone because no one understands. It's deep. It's really deep. And it's a place we often don't tell people and that other people don't see. But guess who sees in your deep face? See, because the deep has a face. The deep has a face. For a lot of people, it's shame, fear, worry, anxiety, lies from your family, When you were a child, you're worthless. You're never gonna amount to anything. You're a failure. You're a loser. You're nothing but a, you'll be nothing but a, or you're just like your dad or you're just like your mom. These are lies that go deep down on the inside, which is why we need to break soul ties. We need the life of Christ to come and shine deep down in that spot because if light doesn't come to the darkness, the darkness envelops it, hides it, and identifies you. But the darkness is a liar and darkness doesn't define you. Darkness never defines you. The devil may try to put that title on you, but that's not who you are. So hovered means he fluttered, he moved, but he did it with confident rest and peace. The Hebrew word is actually, he was relaxed, but he was aggressive and he was hovering and he was expectant for new life to come out of the darkness. And see, God is never stressed. He's never worried. God's never anxious. You, we are. But this is a beautiful thing is you can make an exchange. So when you're stressed, worried, afraid, nightmares, struggling, challenge, depression, anxiety, worry, doubt, trouble, fear, all the darkness is caving in around, someone is hovering over you. And he's not a rattlesnake. The rattlesnake rattles to warn you, you better get back or I'll kill you. God rattles to save you and to pull you out every single time. You're never stuck. God sees you in that deep place and he has hopeful expectation for your life. And so when people were this way, in Isaiah chapter nine, in the darkest time of all humanity, 400 years without the word of the Lord, in the darkest time of humanity, in Isaiah nine, the prophet would prophesy the Messiah coming and he would say this. Matthew would repeat this scripture. I quoted it last week. Matthew would repeat it as the prophecy when Jesus was going to the Galilee of the Gentiles. Go read it. Galilee of the Gentiles, Galilee of the outcasts, Galilee of the not originally chosen, Galilee of the seemingly forsaken, Galilee of the not originally promised. So when Jesus was going to Galilee of the Gentiles, Matthew would quote quote this scripture, but here's the scripture in Isaiah chapter nine, verse two, and it says, those who walked in darkness 
have, this is from the Passion Translation, by the way. Those who walked in darkness have seen a radiant light shining upon them. They once lived in the shadows of death, but now a glorious light has dawned. Let me talk to you about dawning light for a moment. The most darkest time of night is the minutes before the light. It's the darkest time of night is the minutes right before the light. So for me, at 5.30 is six o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting in a house buried alive in poop water. I thought I was gonna die. I could, didn't know who to cry out to, but something deep in the inside began to think, if there's a God, if there ever was, I really need him now. And then all of a sudden, the dawning light came and the sun shined. You know why the sun shined? Because I was in the eye of the storm. And right in the middle of the eye of the storm, the light broke, it cleared, and I could see. Another way that I could tell you is when I go hunting. And I hate the cold, but I love to hunt. The problem is the best hunting is when it's cold, especially if you're elk hunting in the Colorado mountains. I know a lot of you can't relate, but let me just tell you my story. <laughs> I hate being cold. So when I get out in the cold, I am covered head to toe in hand warmers, ear warmers, butt warmers, foot warmers. <laughs> I am like, hate being cold. I got 25 layers on and I'm sitting inside that blind or sitting on the side of a mountain and I'm shivering and, all, and I can't see because it's dark. And all that I'm longing for is the crack of dawn. And as soon as that crack of dawn comes, something shifts on the inside. I can start to see. I feel somewhat comforted. I start to warm up. And now I'm not sitting in the dark anymore. This is how I see it. The dawning light that cracks over the horizon in your darkest moment, and I'll show this to you later in the series, is like the bridegroom coming out of his chambers. The sun is like a bridegroom coming out of his chambers, and he comes with an intent and a purpose when you're in the midst of your darkness. It's like dawning light. And what it does is it enables you to see when you couldn't see. It gives you vision in the midst of obscurity. You know what obscurity means? It means that I can't quite focus. I can't see very clearly. My, my vision's off. It'd be like taking my glasses off, my reading glasses, and trying to read close. It's all obscure to me. I can't see it. But when God comes and puts his light and shines his light on you, what it does is it pulls you out because now everything that's hidden and deceptive is exposed. It needs to be exposed. You got to stop protecting that thing. You need to expose yourself to God. Expose yourself to Jesus. The deceptive lie is that he's out to kill you like a rattlesnake, but he's not. He's out to actually save you. See, Adam and Eve, when they ate from the wrong tree, what did they do? They ran and hid because they were afraid. Here comes God. We better hide. And many of you to this day think, man, if God's, here's, the, here's what I'm showing you. He already sees. He already knows. So why would you ever hide? You don't have to hide from God. He's always coming to rescue and save you and pull you out. You just got to get, it into, get into the light. The people that lived in the shadow of death and walked in darkness are the ones that so desperately need the dawning light of Christ in your heart. You just got to be real with yourself. Stop preserving, stop protecting, stop being afraid of organized religion and control. We love you. We care about you. Yes. And at the end of the day, you first give it to Jesus. Just start there. Stop worrying about everything else. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Yes. Start with Jesus and let Jesus lead you through the process. Yeah. He'll show you through his word. He'll show you why confession with one another and people you love and trust brings so much healing because you'll actually find healing in confession because now instead of me killing you, I'm gonna love you. You wouldn't believe the stuff I've heard. The worst of the worst, incest, child rape, pedophile, murder, all kinds of stuff people confess to me. 
I've, I've heard it all. I'm probably not, it's probably not one thing you're gonna say that doesn't surprise me. Or that surprises me. And what you need to understand is God loves and cares about you. He's for you, not against you. He's so much better than what you could have think. It's like, God's good. Yeah, God's good. But no, he's way better. He's greater than what you think. I'm sitting here in worship today. I'm like, man, God, you're so good. He's like, oh, you don't even know how good I am. This is first service worship. He's like, I'm better than good. He says, that sound out of that keyboard and guitar, I created that and the guitars. In fact, everything in this place, the lights, the twinkling, all this stuff, I created it all for your pleasure. Right. He says, I'm beyond good. I am so much better than what you've ever imagined or thought. And then I'm, oh, I'm crying. God, you're so good. I'm crying in worship. You, you think you know, but you don't really know. God is great. He's greater than great. He's too good. But you got to get out of obscurity and see clearly. The only way to see clearly is to let the light of Christ shine upon you and then respond when it does. It's shining right now. You just got to respond. But see, fear and shame and darkness causes you to retreat and hide. But you don't never, ever need to retreat and hide from Jesus. Ever. Ever. Because he already sees and he already loves. In fact, the Bible says when you were in your worst, most wicked, sinful place, he went to the cross. That's right. Let's say it's you think you're that bad? I get it. Retreated back, went back to drugs, alcohol, sleeping around. Yeah, I did that a bunch of times. God pulled me out every time. Yep. It doesn't give me a license to keep going back, but if you ever do, God keeps pulling you out. And this is the beautiful reality of that you're dead to sin. Most people don't really understand what it means to be dead to sin. Sin will never have the same effect that it once had, ever. It never will. If you say yes to Jesus, I'm telling you right now, it will never, ever, 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 ever be the same as it was. Am I right? Because back then I didn't even care. I never thought twice about what I'm like. Screw it all. I'm going down the road on a, in a bucket to hell. It's a Grateful Dead song. And he's like, huh? Hell in a bucket. It's like, here I go. Ooh, at least my favorite musicians will be there. That's why he's like, man, I'll be... I'm not going to say any names, so I'll make y'all manifest is what will happen. <laughs> so let's understand the power of God's word that spoke in the midst of darkness. I want you to understand how that word had power to divide and separate darkness out of your life. And God said, when God says, what happens? Well, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12 for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even in the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. There's no creature hidden from his sight, verse 13, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So God's word is more powerful than an AR-15, an AK-47. I don't care how fast you think you can pull the trigger on a nine millimeter. He's better, faster, sharper, and quicker because he's alive. Now, back then, they didn't have an arsenal of handguns like some of y'all have. <laughs> they had a double-edged sword, which was the sharpest weapon. But God's word has a purpose. God, God's word has an intent. The purpose in this scripture is a division. Some of y'all need to get sliced up. You need a, a ninja slice up inside your heart. But the slice up is to cut up and divide out the darkness from the light. You already are light. So now God wants to get that darkness out. That's lying, defining, keeping you stuck, which you're not. So God does a division. That's what, so when God speaks, when his word comes to your life, which he speaks every time to pull you out, 
I love you. It's not who you are. Don't stay there. This isn't your destiny. You're dead to that. I died on the cross for you. Take my blood. Break that tie. Bring the cross every time. Get up. Get out of your seat and come out of the darkness. It's a lie. So he divides. He pierces. What? Soul, Soul and spirit joints and marrow. That's the face of your deep. He cuts out the emotional lies. He cuts out bad intentions because it reveals the intentions of the heart. And then he reveals it so he can heal it. it. Revelation sing for the first time what you've been looking at the whole time. God's always been showing himself to you. He's showing himself to you right now. Darkness just conceals what God's already, it's not like God stopped. Come on. All creation's crying out. Just look around. It's God's, God is in everything. But darkness comes to lie to you so that you don't see it. And then there's someone else lying and putting a veil over your eyes. An adversary. So God's word pierces, it reveals, and it discerns what? Truth from lies. Always. It's always separating out the truth from the lie. And it cuts to the deepest places of your life and even your flesh. When God's word comes to your sickness, it heals you. It's a place that you find mercy, healing, and forgiveness. It's like, oh, I see that deep face inside of you. I know what's down in there. Looking down at you. He's hovering over the darkness and the face of the deep because he sees what we don't see or we suppress or we hide and he comes to that place to bring healing, life, forgiveness and the power of God so that it's deep, deep, deep. Now you trade the face of the deep for his face. You need a new face. Some of y'all need a new face. And I'm not just talking about a facelift. I'm talking about your countenance. It's the place you find mercy, forgiveness, and healing. It's dawning light that causes radiance to come to your countenance. The face of God is his countenance shining on your face. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. As the snow and rain that fall from heaven do not return until they have accomplished their purpose, Soaking the earth and causing it to sprout with new life, providing seed to sow and bread to eat, so also will be the word of the Lord, the word that I speak. It does not return to me unfulfilled. My word performs my purpose and fulfills the mission that I sent it out to accomplish. So when God sends his word, he sends it with a purpose. It's on mission. God is always on a mission. And he compares it to the rain that brings life and nourishment to the earth. He's saying, now when my word comes to your earth, the stony places of your heart, your life, the thorny places of your heart, the dark places inside your heart, when God comes to that place, he waters, he nourishes it, and it has a purpose to bring new life. It's always on a mission. And when you respond to that sent word for your life, you exchange your seat and your title. You need a new, you need to get out of your seat and get into a new seat, a new position. The devil puts a title on you, you're a children of darkness, but God puts a new title on you, he calls you the child of light. Ephesians 5, 8, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. All of us were once darkness. We were dark, but God saw us as lovely. The devil lied and said, you're a failure. You're never going to get it. You're a hypocrite. That's, that's, I have some choice words for that. It's not who you are. We were all once darkness. And some of you may today, if you're not born again, don't wait another day. Surrender all. Run to the cross. Why in this world would you wait a second more? It's nothing but being stubborn and hard-headed. God is good. You got a way better life coming for you than the life you've been living. 
And if you backslid, slide back in. You see, slid out. Some of y'all did the moonwalk right back into it. You need to do the shuck and jive right back into the kingdom. Yeah. You were once darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. There's a finding out process. You are in discovery. You are in discovery. You didn't have it all figured out or you wouldn't go back ever. Neither would I. Neither would you or you or you or you or you. So we're finding out, we're learning, we're discovering the ways of God and what's acceptable to him. Verse 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful to even speak of those things which are done by them in the secret. But all things that are exposed, you got to see this. This is gonna rock your world. All things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. Verse 13, For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, wake up, you sleeper. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Wake up, get out of bed. Now, I hate being woke up like that, by the way. If you ever startle me out of bed like that, I will be, you'll see the wrath of Ben Dett. I hate alarm clocks. I hate being shook. I hate being startled out of bed. We teach our kids, we tell them, you better not wake us up in the night and crying out for, where's my passy? I'm gonna burn that passy right now. Your life is over. (laughs) Cry for that passy one more time and die. That's like, man, we can't take it anymore. (laughs) I need my nightlight. No, lights, you don't actually sleep good at night if there's a light on. We're turning that light off because you're going to make my tomorrow miserable. (laughs) Sorry, guys, I'm in a world of little kids. This is a reality thing that happened last night. (laughs) The wrath of mom's way worse than the wrath of dad, by the way. Let me just tell you. We had a sleepover with a bunch of girls last night. It was little girls for a sleepover, and it was awesome. That went way better last service, by the way, way better, because it was spontaneous, yeah. All things are exposed and made manifest by the light, verse 13. Whatever makes manifest is light. Let me show you something really powerful. Every time you manifest, something's coming to the surface. Think silversmith and the dross rising to the top to scoop it out. Think refiner's fire, hammer, Hammer, fire, hammer, fire, hammer, fire, hammer, fire. Do any of you feel like you're in hammer, fire, hammer, fire, hammer, fire? Everything's boiling and roiling and all the stuff's coming up out of your life. The challenge is, is when those things come up, we tend to see them and revert back and fall prey to shame, fear, lies. And then what's even worse is other Christians, when that stuff comes to the top, they kick you and beat you when you're down. We've got to change that. So that's why for me, it's like, oh man, you are manifesting. Jesus is really close to you. Right. Think about it. The only way you can manifest is from light. I'll show you the scripture again. All things are exposed are made manifest by the light. Whatever makes manifest is light. Now, if, I, if you can see it and I can see it, God's revealing it to heal it. Now, you can leave this church and go wallow around in darkness and sin and try to hide it, but eventually, God keeps crying out, and eventually, you can't keep doing it anymore. That's what happened to me. So I just chose to never leave. I was like, I might as well stay and throw up all the time, and change my diapers, poopy diapers, and get it all out, because eventually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop going back, because you're dead to sin. It's never the same. You understand? You guys got to get this. Man, pastor, man, that you got to pray for me. Spiritual warfare, the devil's on every side. I'm like, all right, praise God. 
Now let's get you some healing because you finally came to me to tell me you can't take and stop blaming the devil for everything he's already defeated under your feet. So it's, man, everything's breaking loose and I'm manifesting depression, anxiety, worry, fear, and I'm wanting to run back. So I go, okay, God's revealing it to heal it. Let's get up into the face of your deep and bring some healing. We call it inner healing, which everybody still needs. So the blood stops it. God sees you as perfect, but now there's a process of sanctification. Let's help get you more sanctified. Oh, you hooked up with that hooker? Let's cut that out of your life. Let's break that soul tie. That thing, oh, I'm sorry, it was indirect. Somebody did something terrible to you when you were a child. Maybe you blocked it out of your mind. You don't even realize it's there. Holy Spirit, show us. Let's bring the cross, the blood, and forgiveness to that place so that you can now cut that root and move forward. Bad root, bad fruit. It's not that complicated. Give me about a whole five minutes. We'll lead you through inner healing. Now, some of y'all need like hours, but... Whatever it is, we're going to get it dealt with. (laughs) Jesus can do in five minutes what would take us hours. That's all I got to (laughs) say. Right now. All things exposed are exposed by the light. That's why he says, wake up. You've been sleeping. Sleeping in darkness. Sitting in darkness. Walking in darkness. Laying down in the bed. You know what David said about the bed? Though I make my bed in hell, you are with me. (sighs) What? (laughs) That'll rock your world. Say, oh man, God left me when I did that thing. Oh, really? That's not in the Bible. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. If you actually get the reality that God was with you when you were combusting and doing your worst thing, That's how you actually become dead to sin. Because now I know I was never alone. God didn't want me to stay in that place, so he pulls me out. And he says, that's not who you are. Have no fellowship with the darkness. Let me separate it out of your life. And so my prayer is, God, separate me. Let's say that. Say, God, separate me. Divide out. Bring a division. Cut out anything inside of my life. David said that. God, search me and know me. Test me. Is there anything in there? Do I got a den full of spiders, a den full of darkness, a den full of vipers? Yes. Open heart surgery. Cut it out. I don't want it. Yeah, yeah. So first, just got to get real with Jesus. Light exposes all things. The problem is men love darkness and they don't want to be exposed. But I, I would say to you, don't love the darkness because it'll, it'll always kill you. Expose yourself to Jesus so he can heal you. We were all once darkness. Some of you still are, but don't wait another day. Let the light shine on that place and get healed. It starts with repentance. It starts with first saying, God, that's not what I want. Who, I don't want that thing anymore. I know it's killing me. I know it's not right. God, I repent. Everything starts first with repentance. That's why in Matthew chapter four, when it says, when Matthew quoted Isaiah nine, the very last thing I taught you this last week was, therefore repent for the day of the Lord is this close this close it's on you yes. the day of the Lord the hand yes. of the Lord is yes. now yes. we have this deceptive life if I go to church enough if I read my Bible then God will approve me if I clean myself up nope. then, then I can come back people tell me all kinds of stuff I'll start coming to church when yep. I quit fill in the blank it's like, yeah it doesn't work like that When you work on a hot, sweaty, dirty day, you don't go into your bathroom and get yourself a hot rag and wipe down all your crevices and then get in the shower. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, guys. Listen, (laughs) by message two, you never know what's coming out. (laughs) Okay. Stay on track. (laughs) You jump in the shower dirty. Just say this. Say, take me as I am. Some of y'all didn't say it. Let's say it again. God takes you as you are. And he transforms you.
In order to do this, you've got to tear down the blinders that keep us from saying and receiving. You see, the devil, what he does is he puts blinders on so that the light of the gospel and this truth that I'm preaching today doesn't shine in. So we have an adversary that's putting on an illusion in front of you. God doesn't love you. You're a failure. You're never going to get it. You're a hypocrite. That's not true. All that spiritual stuff's not true. They're all liars. All the church is liars. They never really loved you. They're out to control you. They're out against you. They weren't there for you. Stay away. God didn't really say that. That's a lie. You don't really need to live that way. He consistently puts these blinders, and every time the light tries to come to shine, we allow the blinders to come up. Everywhere I went when I followed Grateful Dead concerts and lived in the world, somebody somewhere, God would send someone along the way to try to preach the gospel to me. But I thought I was good, and I didn't really actually need that. So God said, okay, well, here's a little more crisis. Oh, here's a little more manifesting. Wait, here's a lot more manifesting. And finally, I'm like, hands up, I surrender all. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all along, God had been trying to tell me. If you've been in this church for more than a minute, God's been telling you all along what the truth of the gospel is. But we choose to keep these blinders up. But so what God does is he says, oh, no, 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 no. watch this. Watch what happens. This is powerful. If the gospel's veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing. Why would people be perishing? Because the minds, their, their minds are blinded by the God of the sage. Now, I notice it says God of the sage instead of just Satan or the devil, yeah. because this age has a God. Right. And it's everywhere in technology, it's everywhere on media. It's everywhere. There's deception behind deception in the world system. Layers and layers and layers and layers and layers deep. The challenge is, is many of us can't handle to see that kind of deception. Right. You don't even need to know. Right. You're like, oh, but I gotta know. It's like, okay, get your eye, start eating from that other tree. Right. See how that works for you. God didn't even want you to know good and evil. Right. It's like, oh, I gotta know. Right. No, I don't have to know. There's too, so much deception. In fact, the Bible goes on to say there's things that are happening that don't even, shouldn't even be named. Yeah. We shouldn't even be saying them. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Deception 97, who wants to give their life to Jesus? Let's go. That's my attitude. Yeah. Keep my eyes on him. Be taught by him. Learn by him. Focused on him. Dwelling with him. Minimize the time that you spend on the things of this world. Be very careful because the God of this age is in the world system. Yeah. So the more you look at the world, the more you're looking at him. But if you see God, then God shows you the world from his perspective. Now I love the world, so I'll send you to save it, but not to be corrupted by it. The world's corrupted you, but Jesus saves you. So the devil blinds you, verse four, so that the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Verse five, we don't even preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, our Lord and ourselves, your bondservants for Jesus' sake. Verse six, it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. See this. This is what it's all about. This scripture is Genesis one. All over again. God is hovering over the face of your deep, fluttering with peace and rest, seeing who you are, not stressed, not anxious. And he says, I'm gonna command. I command you to come out of that darkness. Come out. Come out. Look at the scripture. He commanded light to shine out of darkness so that he could shine past the blinders of the devil, past the lies of the enemy, Past the lies that you've told yourself. Past being stuck. So that you can have the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Second face. Face of the deep. Face of Jesus. Which one do you want? The deep has a face, but I'm trading my deep face for his face. Face means countenance. Face means shine. Face means... How you look, face means when you get his face, you now look like, act like, see like, think like, process like. And when I look at you, I see him. Here's the even more beautiful thing. I don't care how bad your darkness is right now. I'll look all y'all straight in the eyes. I don't care how bad you think your darkness is. All I see is him in you. 
Now, faces don't lie. If you're in hurt and pain, our face can often show it. But I still see past that. I see down in the face of your deep, but I see from God's perspective. That's why you should never be in Christian leadership or ever preach the gospel if you don't understand who you are in Christ and this message. If you're not seeing the way Jesus sees, you're seeing the way you see, and that's a problem. When God commands light to come out of darkness, what happens? Your eyes are open. I once was blind, but now I see. And I'll leave you with this and then we'll pray. Romans 13, 11. And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. Let's say that. The night is far spent. Like you spent way too much there. Like you went broke, busted, and disgusted in the night. But you're not children of the night. You're children of the light. And it's far spent. So at some point, it's like, I have spent enough time in that darkness. I am getting out and getting into the light. Like, I'm going to bed early. I'm shutting it all down. I'm getting out of the things of the spirit of this age and this world. I'm going to spend time with my wife. I want to focus on her. I need to be with her. And I'm constantly being dis- distracted or the devil's trying to distract me with another type of provision. Let me show you. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the nar- armor of light. So there's got to be a cast off and a put on. Yes. Let's say it. Say cast off. Cast off. Put on, on. cast off, off. and put on. on. That's the division. So I make the choice to cast off off. and put on (laughs) an armor of light. Notice it says armor. It's an armor of light that drives back the darkness, protects me from the darkness, shields me from the darkness. Verse 13. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in reverie and drunkenness and in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. Verse 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So I have to put on Jesus Christ. Who's got a Bible up here? Physical Bible. Oh, this is pretty. I'm gonna show you guys something. This iPad represents technology and access to almost anything I could ever want to see, good and bad. (coughs) This is a way in. This is a way out. Now, this is technology created by God. Even in any tech Silicon Valley's best day, it was all already, there's nothing new under the sun. They just discovered what was already there. God's never one-upped, ever. He's like, they think they got something going on, but little do they know. It's like. So this, now trust me, I use this for for great, incredible things. All my Bible studies, Bible Gateway, all my cross-references, you can use it to study. You can learn more than ever before. You know, I grew up with encyclopedias. Now you have Wikipedia. There's all kinds of stuff that you can use this for good for, but it can also be used for, for wickedness and evil. Sadly, people can take this word and use it for wickedness and evil. How? Because I'm going to cut you up with the word, beat you down, religion, wrong tree. They're using God's word to actually kill instead of heal. But that's not really what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is God's word. When God says every single time, all you need is an in God said, but you have to find out what he said. That's why we come to church. But more than that, you got to get in your Bible every single day and spend time with them. This can be provision. This is no provision. Make no provision. And that's why you have to know, in a sense, yourself. And you have to be spirit-led. You need the help of Christ. You can't do it on your own. The God of the sage is bringing greater provision more than ever before to do things and see things that is killing, killing, killing people. But the thing is, is if you've been dying in this provision, guess what? God has a different, better provision. And he buys you out, pulls you out, speaks you out, talks you out, loves you out, cares you out, grabs you out, commands you out 
every single time. All you need is then God said. That's all you need is then God said. So close your eyes for a moment. Jordan, come up, please. Let's find out the end God said. And let's let the dawning light crack over the horizon. I want you to see a sunrise in your mind. And see yourself in the place that you were sitting in. And I hear the Lord say, the darkness doesn't define you. What other people said about you doesn't define you. Some of you were told that you're a failure, a loser. You're never gonna amount to anything. Just a hypocrite. But that's not what God says and that's not what God sees. Some of you have heard the lies of the enemy or even a parent say you're just like your dad or your mom. Hmm. It's not who you are. I see the dawning light cracking over your horizon. He's hovering over your life right now, over the face of the deep. And every void place and every without form place, every broken place, he's come to heal you. He's come to love you. He's come to pull you out. Don't stay there, beloved. time to wake up. We're waking up today. You're so good, Lord. You're better than good. You're the best. Spirit of the Lord is fluttering, moving, brooding with expectancy. He believes in you and he never gave up on you. And when others failed you, God never, ever left you, forsook you, or gave up on you. Say yes today. Just say yes. Let those things be exposed to him first. You're not naked and afraid. You're naked and covered. You're naked and loved the way you are. God already sees and loves you in the face of the deep. He comes to the face of the deep. And I hear Jesus say, come unto me. All you who are weak, weary, wore out, hurting, isolated, and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Make the trade today. I'd like to ask my prayer partners to come up. 
Just stay in this spot. Don't, don't move out of this spot. The presence of God is here. If you've been so desperately needing a word from the Lord, if you've been in a place of darkness, we want to pray for you today. Don't take that home. Don't take that out of here. And God will be with you everywhere you go, no matter what, because he's good and he's omnipresent. It's not like he's here and not there. He's everywhere. He can be more somewhere at times or you can feel him more But I want you to know when you go home tonight in your dark midnight hour, God is there. That situation that's outside these doors, whatever it is, God's there. He loves you deeply, amazingly, wonderfully. Like, he's so awesome. Many times I've thought, God, how can you get any better? He said, I get a lot better. Your situation can get better. Matthew 18 says, when two people come together as to touching anything in the name of Jesus, that God will give us what we ask according to his will. And what these prayer partners are gonna do today is they're gonna touch you together, either holding hands or touch your shoulder. It's a point of touch and agreement. If you've not given your life to Jesus, don't wait a second more. If you slid back, slide in. Don't let those blinders stay there anymore. This is the best news of the gospel. Tear down the blinders. Tear down the wall. That's, that's, that's trying to divide you from the truth. And let God divide out the darkness today, okay? So tell someone, I, man, I need to confess, I need to repent. Whatever it is, they're all safe. They don't share your stuff. It's a safe place here. Or you can stay, you can come and kneel down in this front area. We're gonna make this whole sanctuary an altar today. Don't leave with your junk. Leave it here. God will lead you through not picking it up. And if you do, God will pull you out. And eventually it's like, man, I don't even want to pick it up anymore because it's never going to be what I want or satisfy. Only the Lord can satisfy. Okay? So today, if you need prayer, you want somebody to stand with you, you're sick, you need healing, nightmares, depression, anxiety, worry, addiction, fear, distance, lies. If God has spoke to you today and it's like, man, I need to grab onto that come and agree with somebody in prayer all right and otherwise i love you i'll see you guys on wednesday night for supernormal natural you're welcome to hang out here for another 20 minutes 15 20 minutes in this atmosphere if you go please take conversations to the lobby otherwise come kneel down in the front and come let somebody pray for you father i thank you so much for this church and this day thank you god that when we stand together in prayer, you hear us. Thank you when we cry out in desperation, you hear us. Every time. Help. 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 God says, I hear you. I see you. I'm coming for you. Come out. Light shine. 
so that you can see. It's my prayer for you. No matter what it is you face, you gotta get wisdom from heaven. And I bless you all mightily in Jesus' name. Amen.